or lightning bugs. One of nature's miracles. During the evening, these amazing insects produce a tantalizing visual display for all those in attendance by a small flash they periodically emit. Spectacular. However, these are fake, and they're quite rare in the UK anyway. So let's take a look at how I made them. While searching on eBay, I came across these copper string lights. Usually, in string form, they're all wired together in a single colour. This set, however, is based on the WS2812B LEDs, but instead of being a strip, they're in string form. They're perfect for this. Not only are they waterproof, but they're individually addressable and support a full RGB spectrum. We won't need the controller that came with it, we'll just replace that with an Arduino. Make sure you label which wires what before you remove them. Now, I want to use this in the garden, so I'm going to make it solar powered, but solar doesn't work at night, so I'm going to use this solar panel to charge a lithium battery. I'll use the charge controller board that I use when building the wireless quiz buzzers, as they work really well. This panel puts out 6 volts, 2 watt. That's about 300 milliamps, which is more than enough to charge the battery. We don't want these to be on during the daytime, and whilst I could add a light sensor, it's not necessary. We can just monitor the voltage level from the solar panel, and when it drops too low, we'll know it's night time. As for the fireflies, in my trips to Europe, I've encountered what appear to be two different colours, although this may have something more to do with the foliage around them. I've seen a white variety that twinkles at a low level near the floor, and a yellow-greenish one that I've seen fly around. So I'm going to try and simulate these both based on my experiences. Whilst we do get lightning bugs in the UK, it's quite rare, so this is going to be based on my memory. I'm going to wire them up like this. The LEDs have three wires, a 5 volt, ground and data connection, which we'll take to the Arduino pin 6. Using a voltage divider, we'll take the input from the solar panel to pin A0. We use the voltage divider because the panel can go beyond 5 volts, and that would damage the Arduino. There's also a variable resistor wired to pin A2. This will be our brightness setting. This Arduino Pro Mini is from Sparkfun. I've covered this in a previous video about using these in low power mode, so make sure you desolder the link to reduce the power consumption. You could also choose to add a MOSFET to switch off the power to the LED string during the day. As it's a fairly simple circuit, I'm not going to do a montage of assembly today. Instead, here's the finished circuit wired up. What about the code? Well, we're going to use the fast LED library, which you can install via the Arduino IDE to control the LED strip. The set I have is 20 meters long and contains 200 LEDs. And in the source code, skipping by our Firefly class, which we'll come back to later, we can see the setup where we prepare the fast LED library, turn them off, and then prepare the input pins. Then finally, we call the function to initialize all of the Fireflies. In the main loop, we take a reading from A0 and use this to determine if it's day or night. You can adjust these values if you want it to turn on at dusk, as right now, these are very dark settings. In day mode, we want to save power, so we'll put the Arduino into full power down mode. There's only a few ways to wake the Arduino from sleep. You could press the reset button, power cycle the Arduino, or it can be woken by either an interrupt or the watchdog timer. So we'll program the watchdog timer for 8 seconds, but instead of resetting the Arduino when it's triggered, we'll get it to fire an interrupt. In that interrupt, we'll just disable the timer. And after the interrupt is complete, we continue with the line after the sleep function, and the whole process will repeat. If it's still light outside, then the Arduino will go back to sleep, and so on. If night has fallen, then we'll run the code for the fireflies and sample pin A2 to set the brightness of the LEDs, which we then update the library with before delaying. So on to the Firefly class. Using a class makes it much easier to put all the logic in one place. And we'll start with a reset function. This picks a random amount of time in the future from when the fly should start to appear. If it's a yellow one, then we want to pick a random movement direction and set a counter for how many LEDs it should move along before disappearing. If it's a white one, we'll just pick a random duration. You might want to make these durations shorter so they're a bit more realistic, but I'll leave that up to you. In both states, we pick a random LED for the fly to appear at. When running the fly, we work out how much time has elapsed and if it's fit Finished, we turn the LED off and call a function to handle the dead fly. This function will either reset the fly or move the fly along the string of LEDs until the counter reaches zero, where it's reset again. The brightness for the fly is calculated depending on how much time has passed. Between zero and 100 milliseconds, the LED fades in. Then it stays lit for whatever duration was picked, and then it fades out over a further 100 milliseconds. Not really that much code this time, but the effect should look fairly realistic. So with my code, the LEDs are probably blinking a little bit slower than real fireflies. But as I said before, you can adjust that to what seems right for you. This animation shows what the code should be doing at night. The first 100 LEDs are used for the white floor LEDs, and the remaining 100 are used for the yellow ones. Now obviously we need to put all of this in a box, because we can't leave the circuit flapping around in the breeze, so I've designed a simple box. 
and here's one I made earlier. Okay, so now we need to glue all the various parts inside like this, and then we need to put the lid on. You'll see I'm using the threaded inserts to make it easy to screw together. These are made of brass, so they shouldn't rust. I'm going to use the glue gun to seal what I can, which includes where the wires come out. Whilst I don't expect this to be perfectly watertight, it will be somewhat covered up by the solar panel. And finally, we need a pole for it to stand up in the ground. Another 3D print later and some glue, and we're ready for use. A little tip for you, I found the 3D printer spools are very good for winding up this copper wire because it's very good at getting stuck around itself. And there we have it, all installed in some trees in the garden. Looks quite magical, doesn't it? It's a shame I can't have real ones in the garden, but this is absolutely the next best thing. I'm very pleased with how these look. You can adjust the timing in the code if you want to achieve a different effect. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Why not have a go and build some fireflies yourself? Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.